take 399. <laughs> okay, so I I admit I'm actually stumbling over words and I'm not actually conveying what I'm really trying to convey all in one message. A lot of you don't know that when I make these videos, I'm not a, a great editor of videos, so sometimes I'm chopping videos up and I'm like, okay, I don't like this, I don't like that. So here we go. We're going to do it in one shot. I'm not editing this video, but I want to talk to you guys about some things that's been on my mind. Um, the 30% the rule. Um, now... What, what I call the 30% rule is individuals that don't go all in on something, whatever it is. Majority of people, when they decide to do something, they don't give 100% effort into whatever it is that they're trying to do. And so this video, I want to talk a little bit about that. And I want to talk about some of the things that I got in the future that's coming down the pike that I need your help with. So if you do, this is one of those videos where I recommend you watch the whole video and give me your input. So when people, when, when you're talking about credit repair, one thing that I notice when I'm dealing with somebody in the credit repair industry where I have a customer or a client that I'm dealing with, I'm trying to help them through their credit repair process, they're not 100% bought into the process. And I don't know if it's the financial aspect of it, that it takes the requirement that it takes to, to build credit. I don't know if it's effort, 30% um, effort. I don't know what it is, but I know I'm not getting 100% from people. And it, it's it's a certain mindset that, that people have that it's being perpetuated over and over again. And if there's one thing I know that if you're trying to do something, you have to be 100% body. All right. And it's important to understand that sometimes when you commit to something, there's an inner voice that, that comes on in your head and it starts talking to you and it, it talks to you negatively. And when somebody posts a comment or somebody might give you some type of negative energy, and it's real easy for you to buy into that negative conversation that you're having with yourself. And I find myself doing that a lot. But one thing I know is I understand that that's the negative side of me. And so I try to fight that conversation. I know it's important for all humans to have that negative conversation. It's like a, a, a devil's advocate to everything positive that you're trying to do in your life. And so you have you, you make these commitments to yourself, to your family, you know, whether you have a significant other and you, you make these commitments. But there's always this negative conversation to everything positive that you're doing. And it's really important to understand when you're talking about credit repair or you're talking, you know, about personal finance in general. There's so many different people out here that talk about credit repair or personal finance, whatever, and they have their own specific way of doing things that it's always easy to look at somebody else and think, well, maybe I should be with this person or maybe I should do this or maybe I should do that. One thing you have to understand, there are so many different theories on how to do credit repair, how what credit repair is. There's a lot of people who think different things. There is not one fix for everything. There's many fixes to everything, right? There's 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 several different ways you can go about a particular situation. There is no one right way to fix a, a, a situation. So you may watch other credit repair specialists and say, well, this person said do it this way. This person said don't do that, do it this way. One person says it's okay to use templates. Another person might say don't use templates. I want you to know it just really depends on your particular situation and what type of results that you're looking for, right? If you're, for example, let's say you're just trying to do a name change. Do you really need to have a specific um, wording to do not a name change but a correction of your name do you really need a, a, a specific letter or could you use a template to actually fix that name change and and that's that's one of the things that I think when I talk to people I'm always tied up with well I'm defending my theory on credit repair um, one thing I do know 
I'm going to tell you a little bit about the credit repair industry. You have several different people that are in the credit repair personal finance industry that this is their sole purpose of making a living. When you are dealing with these people, right, all of us, when you're dealing with all credit repair specialists, understand that we are trying to provide a living for our families, all of us. Like, I know there's some credit repair specialists that you could pit against one another, but in general, credit repair specialists are just trying to provide a living just like an attorney, a doctor, or what have you. So I understand that there has to be some cost involved in the whole entire process, right? There is no such thing as free credit repair. I talk because I, I tout, you know, being free. Like a lot of my stuff that I give away, I give away probably more free stuff than anybody in any per personal finance uh, industry, whether it's, it, it doesn't matter. I, I know I give away a lot for free. If you joined my newsletter, if you looked at, at my book, um, if you actually emailed me about your personal situation, I help a lot of people for free, right? But here's what's happening. I am fighting between two businesses right now where I'm doing a lot on the credit repair side and I'm doing a lot on the trucking side. And I'm, I'm, I'm torn because I really want to help people. I'm finding that my niche in the credit repair industry is much needed because I have a completely different view that I think a lot of you coincide with. Like you guys agree with the way that I look at credit. Now, when I make this video, I'm trying to make it so that I can kind of get a feel if it's something that you guys would be interested, you, you, you know, everyone that's watching on YouTube would be interested in joining services with me where I'm able to help you, coach you through some of the struggles through the credit repair process. Here's a dilemma that I have, or an issue, I should say, with the credit repair industry. So when you, you sign up for a credit repair, um, you pay a set, set price, $149 a month, $129, whatever, $99, $79 a month. Well, there are months where you actually, there are services that are rendered, right? There are services that are rendered, but there's no results for that month, but you're still making a payment, right? And, and that's, one of the, that's one of the issues that I have with the credit repair industry um, is that when what happens why is a customer or client paying in a month that they had no results in i understand that there was letters that were sent there was work that was done but was it enough to charge them a full month's worth of service for minimum results i'm a results guy i don't really care what your letters do or don't do right is the is the client getting the optimum results um, possible like are they getting what they expect are you meeting expectations and a lot of times a client will go into credit repair and there will become a conflict between the credit repair company and the client and that's only because the expectations from the very beginning were not set properly right so what I'm what I want to do is I'm gonna set an expectation for credit repair across the board for everybody right and it, regardless of what anybody says this is the truth on credit repair okay so when you send letters to a credit bureau or a furnisher there is no 100 percent guarantee that items are going to be removed from your credit report i can say you know what i can remove your bankruptcy i can remove your collection i can remove your uh derogatory items off your credit report your late pays, I can remove that. Your your inquiries, I can remove that. I can tout that all day, right? But the reality of the situation is I don't control the results that you get on your credit profile. That is controlled between the furnisher, the person who actually submitted the data to the credit bureau, and the credit bureaus who actually hold the data, right? I can't guarantee, you know, that you're going to have results in the credit repair process. There's no credit repair specialist that can guarantee results. Anybody that says, I guarantee you that I can remove that is a bold-faced lie. 
there there's no if ands buts about it some people are going to have more results like you can have two people with the same collected I collection item one is a capital one collection item b has a capital one collection item and it might come off easy for one and not the other and that's just the way that the industry is there is people out here that t tell you um they make false claims to you and they tell you i can do this and i can do that but the reality of the situation is there's nobody that can guarantee results in this industry matter of fact anybody that's guaranteed results in the credit repair industry is actually committing a crime right because we cannot guarantee results that we don't have control over we're misleading you and so a lot of times you go into a credit repair meeting and you thinking that because this credit repair specialist told you they can remove bankruptcies off your credit report or they can remove collection items off your credit report you have that already instilled in your head so you pay the 149 initial setup fee and then you're going to start paying 99 dollars a month well three four months down the road when you submitted your your credit profile to the specialist you had 10 items on your credit report three months down the road they've taken off four items and you still have six items on your credit report and you're thinking in your head wait a minute I just paid you 149 initial setup fee and $99 a month how come this stuff isn't off my credit report uh, credit report and at that point that's when the credit repair specialist has to backtrack and let you know okay it's gonna take time and now they're setting the expectation right and anytime you have to backtrack your words in any type of industry you lost the client and so that client may go to another service or even worse they might have a negative outlook on credit repair in general right so a lot of times my issues with credit repair in uh, specialists gurus whatever you want to call them is the expectations that they're they're setting for their clients I can already tell just by listening there's certain keywords that I listen for that I know that that's going to be a potential problem down the road right so first things first I want to set an expectation I know I cannot guarantee anybody any type of service in credit repair right but I'm getting bombarded with emails from people asking me of credit repair situations right issues you guys know I started this channel and I was a, a guy that was really big on building credit but I don't spend a lot of time talking about building credit in my emails I spend majority of my time talking about certain situations on how to dispute items and then when I give a tactic or or something to do uh, you know a strategy when I put a strategy in place a lot of times what I'll get is well so-and-so told me I can do this and like I say there's several different ways if if you feel that that specialist is going to serve you best whoever let's say you heard it from somebody else I'm not gonna say any names but there's several different credit repair specialists out here that are wonderful they do great work right but if they're saying one thing and another specialist is saying that you have to make a decision on what you want to go with like I can't tell you that a Ford is the best car on the road or a Chevy is the best car on the car on the road they're all gonna do certain things right a SUV a sports car they all serve a purpose but you have to decide what's the best vehicle for you right you can't I can't tell you that you know uh, you know a Rolls-Royce or a Lamborghini or Bentley or Mercedes-Benz or BMW like there's like if you really think about it there are several different vehicles on the road now everyone thinks that their particular vehicle I hope right everyone thinks that their vehicle is the best right if you go talk to a, a, a manufacturer at BMW they're gonna say we have the best vehicle if you go talk to a Mercedes-Benz they're gonna tell you we have the best vehicle Lexus will do the same that's the same thing with credit repair we all believe that our method is the best vehicle for you now you as a consumer you have to ask yourself what what person do you resonate with the most which one do you feel most trustworthy which one do you feel is going to get you the best results which one do you feel is being the most honest with you 
And that's a question that you're going to have to ask yourself and you're going to have to sleep night when you're making that payment on a monthly basis, asking yourself, am I doing the right thing? And actually feeling comfortable with it. So here's what I'm thinking, and I'm just going to make this blunt and I'm, I'm going to put it to you, to you guys straight. I'm answering a lot of emails about credit repair. And here's what I, I, I just want to test the waters. I'm making this video to test the waters to see if what I'm thinking is accurate. What I'm thinking about doing is starting my credit repair company back up. And instead of charging you guys on a monthly basis, only charge you for the items that I remove from your credit report. That way there's never a conflict of, of interest, meaning I'm just you know going through and, and doing bare minimum work, sending three or four disputes you know, on three or four different items and, and not doing anything else for two, three months, making you pay, you know, dragging out the credit repair process. And, and this is something that I've been mulling over for a while now. And, you know, at this point, what I'm really thinking about doing is putting somebody on this truck um, and really focusing on credit repair because I know I'm spending probably I would say 90% of the emails that I get are about particular disputing I like dispute situations and asking me how would I go about disputing this item with the credit bureau or the furniture and so I started thinking because I'm, I'm spending so much time on it why don't I just do it myself for you right why don't I just start a start a business get my credit living uh, repair business back up on on the ground but before I did anything, I wanted to talk to you guys. I wanted to make sure that when, when I do this, that there's enough people interested in the service, right? And so here's what I'm thinking. I, of course, there's going to be an initial consultation that I'm going to charge, right? It's not going to be anything extravagant. It's just something that you and I can go over your credit report to make sure that this is going to be a service that's for you. Right. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over your credit report and show you the items that you should dispute and you shouldn't dispute. And then I'm going to put a plan together to dispute those items. And then I'm going to be the one that's actually going to help you dispute the items um, that you have. Right. So if you are looking for someone that is honest, that you can trust, and, and actually go through the process with you without trying to take every nickel out of your pocket, right? Just what I want you guys to do is I'm going to post my, my email address and I, I want you guys to email me your thoughts on this whole process that I'm thinking. Do I have enough viable people to where I can put somebody on my truck and, and solely focus on credit repair? Because that's that's the thing that's that I'm passionate about. That's what I would really like to do. Um, but do I have enough people to where I can support myself on a full-time basis doing strictly credit repair for people? Now, if the people that are emailing me, and this is just you know my numbers, if the people that are emailing me are actually signed up for the service, that are getting the free service now, if they're able to just say, you know what, I'm, I am eating up a lot of this gentleman's time. Can I pay for some of his time? If some of those people would just, you know, actually be participants in what I'm thinking, I will be fine. I'm not looking to get rich. I'm not looking to, you know, uh, to do anything extravagant, to grow it really big. I just want to help as many people as I possibly can. But all I'm doing is, it, it, between you and me, all I'm doing is just disputing items for people. That, that's basically what I do in my spare time is write letters and, and I'm being bombarded with so much of this stuff that it's like, okay, well, maybe I need to backtrack and start thinking of a different direction that I can go in. If this video resonates with you, if this is something that you might be interested in, what I want you to do is I want you to reach out to me. If you're looking for somebody to coach you through your whole personal finances, it's not just uh, credit repair right? It's not just budgeting. It's not just business credit. I have a wealth of knowledge on several different things that I'm willing to help you with, right? That I'm, I'm willing to mentor you on. 
um, I know when I was growing up, I was, I was always looking for mentors, always looking for somebody to, to help guide me in the right direction. If you're looking for somebody to help you guide you in the right direction with your personal finances, I want you guys to email. I want you to email me and just let me know you're interested. You don't have to send me a long, drawn-out email about your particular situation. I just want to know how many people would be interested in a service, a credit repair service, where you actually pay for results and not just month to month, right? Like a monthly set fee. And what I'm thinking about is like charging $25 per item that's removed for your credit report. So let's say you have a TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax credit report, and you have a uh, Capital One, I keep picking on Capital One, I don't know why, but you have a Capital One uh, uh, collection with TransUnion, Experian, and Equifax. Those are three items. So let's say I remove it from your TransUnion. That would just be $30 because you still got your Equifax and you still got your Experian. That I would have to still dispute with. So it's not one item for all three credit bureaus. I would charge you for one particular bureau for that for that uh, for that one particular item I don't I hope I, I explain that properly um, just basically each item that I remove from your credit report I will charge you twenty five thirty dollars for that particular item I know there's some companies out there that do that but they will have a range where okay well if it's this type of item then it's gonna be a little bit more no it's just gonna be a set price thirty dollars per item that I remove from your credit report if, if if I send out letters and there's no results, I just don't understand how can I charge you for a service when I haven't actually got the results that you were expecting, right? And like I said, I, I, I tried to set this video up so that you understand that one, you have to have the right mindset. And when I say the right mindset, I started talking to you about the 30%. You have to be, this has to be something that you're 100% committed on. Right? It can't be something, well, I kind of want to do it. Like, if you're really sick and tired of being in a situation where you don't know exactly how to go about your credit, you don't really know what credit is, and you have all these different questions, and you're just looking for somebody to not just do it, but to, to educate you on why we're doing particular things, um, just because an item is a derogatory on your credit report, you may not want to dispute it, right? And I can't really go through the whole situation, but if it's a, if, if it's an item on your credit report where it gives you a long history, um, why would you dispute a 30-day late? You have one 30-day late, whereas a lot of credit repair companies, they will dispute that because it's a derogatory. And they don't know who to dispute it with, and they will go to the credit bureau and dispute a 30 day late with the credit bureau and the credit bureau will just, they may just take the whole item off your credit report. And I'm seeing these errors when people are trying to do their own credit reports and you know, hey Kenny, I sent this letter, they took out my whole item, I just wanted to dispute a 30 day late. And I'm getting these emails and I'm going, well why would you dispute a 30 day late that was previously two years ago now you just lost 20, 30 points on your FICO score, and it could just change your category. You could go from uh, from good to fair just by one simple dispute. And and that's what I'm seeing a lot. I'm going by asking people, well, why? what was your thinking, right? Because if, if you ever got a chance to talk with me, a lot of times I'm asking you, well, what were you thinking? What were you thinking when you disputed with the credit view? And a lot of times it's, well, it was a derogatory, so I disputed it. Believe it or not, there's a lot of credit repair specialists that will do that. And I'm just not one of them because I believe the FICO score is what we're after. Not necessarily the credit report, but the FICO score. I look at it from, because when, you, when you're applying for credit reports or, or credit cards and stuff like that, to get loans and, and stuff like that, a lot of times those, those, uh, those services are automated. Like you will put in your your application and they will spew it out a yes or no just from the information that you put into the computer. And it could be as easy as them reading a number, right? A number. A number is what gets you approved. So why are we disputing all these items that may lower your FICO score? 
when in all actuality, we may leave that particular item alone. And that's nothing that you can get in two or three you know, hours of watching YouTube. That's something that years and years of dealing with credit reports, helping people with different situations, that's experience that, that can only make you those, make those type of decisions. So long story short, I know I rambled. Um, this is just something that's in my head and I wanted to put it out there to see what you guys think about a service like that. If you do, email me, let me know that you're interested. And I'm going to catch everyone on the next one. I don't want to make this video too long. You guys have a great day. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.